Hi, I'm Tash and welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. It is Wednesday the 5th of April 2023 and I'm recording here from Sydney, Australia. So in this week's episode, episode 12, I have one finished object, one faux from the vault which I'm wearing, uh, one new cast on and some progress on my works in progress and then a little bit of chatter about my week at the end. All right, so my finished object is the DK Weight Gusset Heel Socks. Uh, they're toe-up socks, um, I did a wedge toe, so Judy's Magic cast on a wedge toe. I increased to, from 16 stitches to 44 stitches, so 22 on the front and 22 on the back, and then you know knit until about two and a half or two and a quarter inches from the length that I wanted. And then I increased only on the heel side from 22 stitches to 42. So two less than the total. Um, and then you do, um, it's called the flegal heel where you just knit, just knit across those stitches and do some short rows until you get back down to 22 stitches. And then you continue working in the round up the calf. And then I did a two by two rib and uh, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. So that's got a really nice stretch to it. And hopefully that will fit my friend and that'll be nice house socks for her. It's her birthday next week. So hopefully she'll like those. So that's my one finished object. Um, my new cast on is another muscle bra hat. Um, this is my 13th one and I'm using Madeline Tosh Euro sock in the color Chill Pill. And yeah, I think that's coming out really quite nicely. It's a nice yarn. I've never worked with this particular base before. I should have checked actually. I don't know if it's discontinued or not, um, but it is nice. Um, it's, it's the only skein of Euro sock that I've ever bought. I bought it on D stash a while ago. And yeah, I'm really happy to have another one of these on the needles. This is great for me when I'm the passenger with my daughter doing her, uh, getting her logbook hours for driving. She's nearly there. She's got about three or four more day hours and about eight, nine hours, night hours. So that's going to be, it's the night hours that are going to be a bit harder. But now that daylight savings has um, changed and it's getting dark here, sunset here is at 6 p.m. That should be a bit easier. But these, this is great for being in the car because I can totally, there's no increases, no nothing. I don't have to worry about, like I think I do, because I'm going to do a video after I finish recording, I'm going to do a video on the um, what I've learned from the muscle bra hats that I have made already. And one of the things that I've learned is that there's over a hundred rows of even um, even knitting after the last increase, well over a hundred rows. So that I can just sit on that and not just go round and round and round. So that's perfect passenger in the car knitting. Because uh, I do, I get car, well obviously if I'm the if she's a learner driver, I've got to be looking 100%. Um, but I'll knit on that even if like my husband's driving or someone else is driving because I don't have to look down at all and I get a bit, I get car sick pretty quickly if I have to look down. So that's perfect for the car. So I, I think I'll probably almost always have one of these on the needles. Uh, I like knitting hats anyway and I do like variety in hats, but this is just so good. Um, and because I get the stockinette, the straight stockinette factor without um, the sore hands factor that I can have from too much knitting on socks. Right, so that's my new cast on. I'm trying to think, um, 3.25 millimeter needles again and 136 stitches, which, and it's a fingering weight yarn. And that's pretty much my standard for the muscle bra hat. So that is one of the things I've learned that I do like it in a fingering weight yarn, but I'll do a full video on that after this one. Right, so that's the, that's one cast on. In terms of my works in progress, progress that I've made, uh, this is, Ilha by uh, Ulan Sushe, S-U-C-C-H-E. And I'm using Life in the Long Grass in the colorway Chirp. It's really pretty. It's it's um, got like sort of a green undertone and then lots of these little flecks of pink and purple and yellow and blue and, um, but they're not too intense. They're just, they're definitely there, but they're not too, so it's got cables and lace. Um, so I've just finished the all of the yoke uh, cables and lace detailing. And now I've got my markers in for the raglan increases. And I've got at least eight raglan increases. So that's pretty straightforward knitting for me now as well, because it will be, you know, increase eight, knit around, increase eight, knit around. And when I get sort of, 
after I've done about maybe eight increases, that's when I'll get to the point where I need to start um, trying it on and maybe block it midway just to see if there's any growth because I'll be trying it on for, is it wide, like check gauge, although I'm pretty confident that the gauge is around 26 stitches over four inches. Um, but just check the fit, check the uh, arm size, and that there will end up being a lot of knitting on this. I have three skeins and because I'm going to make it a short sleeve dress, I will end up using, I think, almost all of the three skeins. So that's a pretty long, um, big project, but most of it is stockinette after I, now, actually from now on, it's pretty much mostly stockinette. This detail here, this little cable detail, runs down the side, which is really pretty. Um, but other than that, and that's actually quite nice because it just gives you a little bit of something happening instead of just stocking it in the round. All right, so that's um, Ilha, um, which I'm, yeah, I really love this pattern. So I'm looking forward to actually having that. I'm hoping to get it done before the weather completely turns and it gets, because it's coming into uh, what is fall or autumn here now. Um, I'm hoping to get that done before it gets too cold. So that's Ilha. Um, my sport weight socks. Where I put them? Where are they? Hmm, oh, here they are. Right, the sport weight socks. I've actually made no progress on this at all because I was, if I was going to work on socks, I was going to finish those DK weight socks. So I've still got exactly the same four and a half inches to go in the leg and including the ribbing, and then that's going to be for my elder daughter Mia. So they might actually get some attention now that the DK weight socks are finished. But given that I've got ranunculus, I'm uh, not ranunculus, given that I've got muscle wear, um, anyway, I'll, I'll try and do a little bit of this here and there, like when my hands aren't sore or anything. So I will do a bit of progress on that. Um, I forgot to mention for the socks, they're on um, 2.75 mil needles, which is what I do sport weight socks on. And the yarn is skein uh, sport sock in the colorway even tide. So the ranunculus, I have finished the body of it, so it's off the needles, but it still has, still needs sleeves. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it's coming out. Um, I think that's gonna be a good length. It's about the same length as my green one. The only modifications that I've made so far is that, aside from a little bit of length difference, is that I didn't do the short rows in the front and now I think about it and when I compare it to my green one, because I was sort of a bit confused, short rows in the front, why do we have short rows in the front? And it's to do with the, the design of the pattern. And um, so here's my green one and here's the front. So what it does is it drops down away from the ribbing that first, those first elongate, set of elongated stitches. And the idea is that it's kind of meant to be sort of like a, um, you know, like a long series of necklaces, um, sort of going down the yoke. So I quite like that. And if I was to do it again, um, I think in the green one, I took two of the front short rows out. Whereas in this, orange one I didn't do either of them or any of them whereas I think um, I think going forward I would I would still do some I'd probably do the same as in the green if I made another one um, yeah because I, I think that just sort of drops that um, that detail down a little bit I mean I'm not ripping back especially mohair all of that so this yarn is Julie Asselin in the color um, uh, Anatolia is the yarn and it's in the colorway Clementine and yeah, so I would, I'm definitely not ripping all of that back. But I'm really liking the color. It's funny, these two colors together, they remind, as soon as I saw them together, they reminded me of something. I actually don't like these two together. I think they're both really nice colors on their own. I certainly don't like them together. But they remind me of the snakes that are left in the, in the, lolly, in the lolly bag. You know, when you've got, everybody eats the red and the purple ones and the yellow ones are usually left and the orange and the green ones are left. They remind me of those jelly snakes. Anyway, um, yes, I do love this color. I think that's gonna be really nice and I'm looking forward to. So, and because the sleeves are, and because the body of the sweater is knit on six mil needles, it should go really quickly. And usually when I magic loop, I magic loop a little bit tighter. So for sleeves, I often go up a needle size, but for this green one, I didn't. And I don't think I will for this one either. Like I could go up to a 6.5 mil needle, but 
um, I just found I didn't really need it. The, the fabric is sort of airy enough. And if you have a look at the body compared to the sleeves, I mean, it might be a tiny bit tighter, but I don't really, it's not enough that it bothers me and I don't mind that. And then um, there's an I-cord bind off on the sleeves. So, which I, I think is really pretty. There, there's like a, an angled bind off, which is a, an option, but I chose not to do that. And I, I won't do it for this one either. So there, um, that's, this one's my ranunculus and that's it for my works in progress at the moment. So I'm up to faux from the vault. So this is what I'm wearing. It's Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. I'll stand up so you can see. It's just a, you know, normal long sleeve, um, long sleeve jumper. It's got, um, I'll show you the yarn. The pink yarn is Madeline Tosh Toshmo Light in the colorway Hilo. And I used about 1.8 skeins of that. And this self, silvery colour, the grey colour, is Silver Fox, and that's Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino Light. And I used about 70 grams of that. Now I, and there's even a little bit of, so it's some Fair Isle, and so it's lace and a tiny bit of Fair Isle. Um, I chose to go for low contrast. When I sort of looked at the um, projects on Ravelry, I thought I, I liked the lower contrast versions the best. Um, yeah, so what did I. What did I do differently about this order? The yarn, well, Tosh Merino Light I've knit with a lot and I'm very comfortable with that yarn. I really like it. It's They're both single ply yarns, but the Tosh Mo Light, I actually found a little bit itchy and it's fine like here, but I wouldn't want, I've made a lot of um, tops from Tosh Merino Light, but I, and I thought about doing the same with Tosh Mo Light, but I actually don't think I'd want um, the Tosh Mo Light all over my, my body in a top. So it's fine in the jumper, it's fine on my arms, but I don't think, I, I think it would bother me a bit if it was on my torso without a t-shirt underneath. So um, what other things do I do differently? So the neckline, I um, when I saw the, the projects on Ravelry, the cast on for my size for the neckline, in fact, I think for a few, the first few sizes is 96 stitches. And I was just a bit worried that that would be a little bit too tight around my neck. So I, and so the, the way it was is you would cast on 96 stitches and then really quickly do a knit two, make one left. So that turns two stitches into three. So knit two, make one left the whole way around. So to go from 96 stitches to 144 stitches. So that's quite a big increase. And I thought, look, that's gonna be quite a lot, quite high up around my neck. So what I changed it to was I cast on 108 stitches and instead of doing make two, uh, sorry, knit two, make one. I did knit three, make one. So with 108 stitches to start and then turning every three stitches into four um, all the way around, that got me to 144 stitches and just gave me a slightly wider neckline. This is quite a high neck t-shirt. Most of my t-shirts actually sit underneath the, um, the, so you wouldn't even see them. This one's actually very high neck. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm generally happy with that length and I don't mind that little bit of t-shirt showing. Um, you know, I can always sort of s snug it in a little bit if I really don't want too much of it showing. So um, other than that, I don't think I made any other changes to the pattern. I pretty much did it as, as written and it has this um, butterfly stitch on the body. So the high low's got quite a bit of variegation and I, I thought that was quite pretty and it has this butterfly stitch all over the body. And I ummed and ahed about whether I'd do that, and then I thought, you know what, actually, it's, it doesn't take very long and it's quite pretty. So yeah, the whole finished object weighs 250 grams, and um, yeah, it, I, I quite like it. It's, um, it's not super, it's not snooper, super snug, and it's not, so, I guess it's reasonably fitted. It doesn't have any um, waist shaping or anything, it's just straight down. Um, and I think there's no ease around the bust. So it's just knit to, um, to exactly my measurements. And yeah, it's fingering weight. So it's, you know, it's not too, um, not too warm. Um, you know, which is, you know, for our climate, fingering weight sweaters, even though they take a lot longer to knit, they're probably the most, you know, the most wearable sweaters. Uh, right, so that's it for my um, faux from the vault um, purchases. I didn't make any purchases this week and um, plans that actually I did spend a bit of time on some my plans 
I said I was going to do some more swatching on um, for the, my next Ingle sweater, which is going to use definitely Madeleine Tosh Pashmina in the color Dust Weaver and Creme Key Soul, Soul Wool Mohair Silk. So those two are the main color of the sweater. And I swatched a few different yarns with mohair. Um, this is where I started. This is what I'd shown last week and I didn't love this one. I quite liked this one, but I wasn't sure. And I guess um, somebody mentioned, I think it was maybe Rosemary, that maybe there wasn't enough on that. You know, maybe I should do a bigger swatch, um, which probably would have been a good idea. Um, I tried another yarn with the, so that was this one here was the Madeleine Tosh um, Air Light. I think that is uh, Ruby Slippers and the, um, what's it called? Rowan, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Black Current. So those two were this here. And then I tried the Black Current with this Madeleine Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. Can't remember the color. Um, and I only did a couple of rows and I knew I did not like that. It was really dull. Then I tried, um, I tried the same mohair from here, but with a, um, another, where is it? So, here it is. I tried those two colors together here and there just wasn't enough of a contrast and then I tried that this mohair with like a, a gray didn't like that I didn't really have any pink grays then I tried some green I was really getting a bit crazy I tried some green mohair with like the, the yellowy green yarn from my first ill headdress then I tried that green mohair with um like a like a dark gray and which I didn't I just didn't like those at all I thought I'd try you know can't can't hurt to try and so I've gone back to I think this one here which if I fold those down I do think that is going to be really pretty um yeah so I'm going to go back to that one and the reality is you know I can cast on get the start of it done and if I start doing the um the color wiki oak and I don't really like it I can just rip it back and and then try something else and swatch a bit more but I think I'll get started and I'll try this and I, I think I'm actually really gonna like that I think that's really gonna be pretty so yeah we'll see it's not too crazy bright like I think this tones this down so a bit so we'll see how we go and yeah I'm I think I'm gonna like it so anyway that's enough that took me a bit of a while I was playing around I don't I'm not a big fan of swatching because I just want to get going um, but yeah I think I, I found I think I found my match early on so that's my main plans um, and then I still have the other plans that I was going to do um, I'm still gonna make the pink and purple sorrels so there's my pink yarn and there's my purple yarn and I'm still going to do the climb socks after I finish the sport weight socks for Mia. And I'm still going to do another ranunculus in the, in the Barocco remix. So all the purples all the time. So yeah, so that's my upcoming plans aside from obviously finishing the sleeves for ranunculus and just working around on the Il dress. And so that's actually a pretty short um, episode today of, um, with the main stuff. I haven't done any sewing. So um, I'm just going to get on to a little bit of chatter um, about my week. And um, so if you're signing off now, thanks for watching. If you could um, like and subscribe, if you've liked what you've seen, that would be great. Um, if you're sticking around for the chatter, um, there's just a little bit. And after I finish this video, I'm going to record uh, for the, the muscle bra. Uh, the muscle wear hats what I've learned from knitting a bunch of those right so my week um, I recorded last Thursday and it's Wednesday now so it's only six days ago probably the uh, well definitely the biggest thing that's happened since last Thursday is my dad went into hospital on Friday so he was starting to do better but then they thought he needed um, a blood transfusion so he went in on Friday for the blood transfusion um, but then while he was in there uh, he had a, a little 
yesterday, had a little fall. And he's okay, um, just sort of, but his just strength isn't there in his legs and he sort of just slipped down. But they were able to get him up and um, get him back into bed. But he's pretty tired and he's not feeling great. And I think one of the reasons as well, he's now got a chest infection. So they're giving him uh, antibiotics and hopefully he'll be um, on the mend and better enough to get an iron infusion. So I went yesterday and my brother's going today. He's, um, he lives four hours out of Sydney, so he's driving up. He hasn't seen dad for a little bit. So yeah, and um, if my dad's still gonna be staying a bit longer, like if he's gonna stay over Easter, then I'll go see him tomorrow. If not, I'll go see him at his, um, I'm hoping he'll go home tomorrow, but I just don't think so. I think they're gonna wanna keep him in there um, a bit longer, run some more tests. So that was, um, so I saw him on Saturday and then again, um, did I see him? No, I saw him on Sunday and then on um, yesterday, which was Tuesday. Um, and then on, no, sorry, I saw him, it doesn't matter. I saw him Saturday and then on Tuesday. Um, Sunday, I went to my um, son's baseball game and they didn't have a scorer, so I was gonna score. And then it got rained out. So they, I think it only went for about half an hour and then it stopped. So. Not a lot going on, but obviously that's where my brain is with my dad at the moment. Um, so it's Wednesday today, tomorrow is um, the last day of school. And I've um, got some nice plans coming up. Um, like tomorrow I'm seeing a friend for dinner and um, she's the friend that I went to Noosa with. So that will be nice to go out for dinner. That's We've been friends for about 30 years now. And um, that's our thing. We go out for dinner together and when we catch up, it's really lovely. So that's tomorrow night, which I have to look forward to. Um, the only other, like obviously I'm just, you know, keeping an eye on, on my dad um, and, you know, spending time um, going and visiting him, him. And then it's the school holidays, which is really nice. I've got two weeks, so it's Easter on Friday and then we've got school holidays for about two and a half weeks. So it'd be good to have um, a bit of a break and be able to um, spend a bit more time visiting him. And the only other thing that I have next week, which is a really yucky thing coming up, is um, I'm having an endoscopy and colonoscopy next Wednesday. So something to look forward to. Um, I've had one, one three years ago, and it was pretty gross. Like all the prep work, we have to, I don't know if you've ever had one, it's pretty awful. Um, you have to drink, uh, you have to fast for quite a while and then drink this really revolting stuff and stay close to home because you're gonna poop a lot. So that's not gonna be much fun. Um, but it's really important. I have a couple of autoimmune diseases and I have a lot of gut issues and they just want to, I'm supposed to have one of these every two years and I'm a year late. So um, hopefully everything's fine. I think they just want to check to make sure there's nothing really yucky like Crohn's or um, ulcerative colitis or, um, you know, I suppose it could be IBS. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Um, and I'm really glad to be able to have the procedure to make sure everything's fine. Um, yeah, so that's next Wednesday. Nothing nothing too exciting there, but um, yeah, it's holiday, so hopefully doing a bit of knitting and you know just a bit of house stuff. I put, I put off a lot of jobs for the school holidays, so there's quite a few jobs around the house to do. Anyway, boring, boring, not very exciting. Um, the exciting stuff was earlier, all the knitting. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna sign off now so that I can, do the um, muscle bra hat videos before it gets too dark. And yeah, I hope everyone has a good week and hopefully I'm feeling well enough next week after the whole, you know, um, gastroscopy and colonoscopy or whatever it is um, to do another video in a week. So yeah, so hope you have a great week and, um, and a lovely Easter and I'll see you next week.